Hi everybody, I'm Dilla Blitz and welcome. Today we're gonna to do an unboxing of Panzer Battles, 11th Panzer on the Tier River, Multiman Publishing's game of World War II combat involving German and Russian forces around the Stalingrad pocket in December of 1942. Now this is game number 19 in their standard combat series. Let's open up the box, take a look at the components and offer some initial impressions. So let's jump in and get started. And I think before we start, I want to say this is a, you know, this is a pretty light box. I'm going to guess it was about maybe inch, two inch, inch and a half, two inches thick here. Um, not a ton of heft to it. And I think that's kind of a, a hallmark, if you would, of the SC, of some of these SCS series games where the, the idea here, I think, you know, meat and potatoes kind of wargaming, right? So you're going to get a map, you're going to get some counters, you're going to get some rules that are designed to help you get into the game really fast. The rules are standardized to a large degree across the system. So you're going to be able to pick it up, learn it, play it, and get right into it on the start. And the other thing, I think a lot of these games in the system seem very affordable. I got this one during the winter sale, the, the Black Friday sale, and I think it was under 20 bucks that I paid for it. So kind of affordable, easy access wargaming that have some fun games and well-designed uh, scenarios inside them. With that in mind, let's just give a little bit of the, the backdrop here of what this uh, game, what kind of conflict it's trying to uh, to simulate here. And basically this is, uh, I'm going to kind of read this off the back because I think it's a little bit helpful in terms of setting the seam. Um, so this is covering the classic mobile defense battles of the 11th Panzer Division against the culminating point spearheads of Soviet Operation Uranus. So the Soviets have successfully entombed the Stalingrad pocket and in the pro are in the process of locking down the pocket even harder. In an interesting twist of events, the 11th Panzer Division recently arrived fr from France and is preparing to take part in the northern portion of the German relief attempt on Stalingrad. Full strength and available, this division launches into the Soviet drive in what has become a textbook example of mobile defense and counterattack. So, um, the scene here is we've got two to three days per turn, 500 meters per hex. If we take a look at the back here, complexity is medium. I feel like that's uh, pretty pretty accurate for this. I would even argue, though, for within this standard combat series that maybe this one's a little bit easier. Now, I don't have a ton of experience with it yet. I've looked at and played the Africa Core game. I feel like the, the additional rules for the Africa Core game were more complex than the rules for Panzer Battles. These feel like it's it's even easier to kind of dig into than Africa Corps was. So I'm going to, but I, yeah, medium sounds pretty good. I mean, we'll take a look at the rules in a second too. And then Solitaire, cap uh, suitability, medium, you'll be playing both sides. There really aren't any specific rules for Solitaire in and of itself. Now, it mentions there's four scenarios here. We'll take a look at those as we get inside. I think there's actually, you could argue there's five and then the components which we'll see as we dig in. But let's jump right in and open up and get started here. So if we kind of pop this open here, a little bit stuck. Box is pretty standard. Okay, so what we start out with is our standard series, our standard combat series rules. And this is something you get in every single um, SCS series game, which is a standard rule set. This is version 1.8. Um, and if we look at this, another nice, these are nice things, it's eight pages long, right? So it's a really modest and easy to digest rule set. The back page here is all the designer's notes and I'll show some close-ups. Now this one's in color. I don't remember the previous one being in color, but maybe I'm just misremembering that. But again, relatively straightforward. You know, you've got reinforcements, overrun combat, talking about zones of controls and movement and how it integrates with the terrain effects. I mean, you can digest this rule set and once again, you've digested one of these rule sets, you're pretty much ready to play any one of the games in the series. So if you've played other games in the SCS series, it's probably just a matter of spending a few minutes kind of refreshing yourself of the rules and then off you go. However, every series, every game also has its own unique rules for that particular game. This one is 12 pages. And again, we see the back page here is just the terrain effects chart and the combat table and any other, we've got an artillery roll, any other kind of mechanics that might be worth remembering there come up. And then most of these rules in this rule book here are just the scenario setups. So they start on page five. So the additional rules here basically for this one are only one, two, three, four pages. Really easy. And basically I think what, what I'm starting to get a sense is that SCS series, they each have kind of some unique rules that apply to that particular game. And looking these over, the one that seems to stand out to me is the activation rule. So the way this game plays is that the Germans have four activation chits and the Soviets have four activation chits. And each turn you go through and you pull one of those chits out and then you can play only those units. 
and then you alternate. So the Soviets are going to go, the Germans are going to go, and you play through all your activation chits until you get to the end of the turn, and then until you get to, oh, they're all burned up, and that ends that turn. So you're going to have kind of this back and forth where you're not quite sure which units are going to be moving and attacking. Now, some of them overlap, as we'll see on some of the units here in a second, but it creates kind of a mobile, fast-moving type of game here. The rest seem relatively straightforward, you know, air support and barrages, and it does mention here, again, the scale is two to three days, which each hex is approximately 500 meters. Now, we should probably take a look at the scenarios, too, because the back of the box mentions four, and I guess that is, but I could argue you could make it five. You've got the campaign game, which is all six turns, the full battle, and the Soviets start with the initiative. Then you have the German strikes first, which is a variant of the campaign game, I guess more than its own scenario, which is where the Germans start with the first activation. Then you've got State Farm 79, which is a third scenario. It's a two-turn scenario with um, kind of one of the smaller components of the larger campaign. And then likewise, we've got two more here, I'll be Balk and then the containment battle scenario, which are two of the smaller scenarios that you can play. This one again is two turns, and this one is a full, looks like five turns instead of six turns. So a variety of length looks like kind of uh, five or arguably perhaps even six different scenarios to explore as you go through those. Let's take a look at our units now. Left side of these, I'll show some close-ups as we go through them. Left side are the German units, and the right side are the Soviet units. And then down at the bottom here, we can see the activation chits. So each side has four. So the Soviets could pick, for example, all units, all infantry and cavalry, or they could pick the first tank and the fifth mechanized, which are these ones that have this kind of lighter pink stripe on them. Germans, likewise, uh, are going to be picking with the 11th Panzer Division three times. And these are all the ones with the white stripes over here. Or they could pick all non-11th Panzer Germans, which would be these other units that are in here. So again, you've got some variability as to what units are going to be going to kind of create, recreate that ebb and flow of the battlefield there. And you get one counter sheet, they're stepped, and so we've got two sides for many of these units. Uh, they seem to look fine. They're half, I want to say half inch. I'll make a note if they're not. They might be slightly bigger than that, but it looks like about half inch. Here's what's in the box, and we already know that. And then... We've got our maps. Now I'll show these in a close up. There are two 22 inch by 34 inch together with an overlap. It's a 43 inch by 34 inch map. White, I think, depicting the snow of December in 1942. Um, these look pretty cool. I mean, they, they elegant. They look like very functional maps that you can use to play the game. All the components that you'd want there. It kind of creates a nice sweeping scale. A lot of similarity of terrain, too. So, I mean, you've got these. You know, a lot of very open and clear terrain hexes here that I would imagine creates a lot of different movement possibilities for the forces that are involved. So I'll show a close-up, too, of these together so you can see them both uh, kind of put together. Uh, so again, you've got, you know, relatively large kind of battlefield to fight these battles out on. So which is for a, a smaller game, you know, you're going to have a, a good size battlefield here to kind of engage with these. And then we have a green die and a white die, and we are done. So again, that's Pen's Battles. Relatively short unboxing, but a, a relatively straightforward game with a unique activation kind of mechanic to capture some of the ebb and flow of this battle. Uh, sounds like it'd be fun. I think the idea that you've got two forces, you know, you've got the Soviets on the offensive and then a fresh German Panzer Division butting heads against each other outside of Stalingrad, I think it can create for some really interesting scenarios and some interesting two-player games as well as kind of an exploration of the solitaire aspect if you were so inclined to play that way. So there you go. Let me know what you think. If you've enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, please consider subscribing. This again is Panzer Battles by Multiman Publishing, designed by Dean Asig, who's designed and uh, developed by Lee Forrester, who have designed many of the games in this series. Thanks so much for tuning in and have a great day.